beautiful Switzerland this morning, I have Matthew Harkov. He is a test pilot. Now this is a very unusual part we cross of road with an airplane. So we have takeoff thrust set, passing 60 knots. Now welcome to the air over Needwald. My main job is to keep us clear of traffic. Then I'll let you fly for a little bit. Your controls, that's your airplane. We'll do a uh, stall test. Uh, I never had a half a G and uh, I'm a bit anxious about uh, seeing if I can take it. But when a stall happens and when it nose down, and it feel like a roller coaster, you're just going down the yeah. sky. The touch roll is a motion of an aircraft that uh, that feels like rolling. This is 1.4 Gs right there. Whoa. And a level acceleration. Let's do a touch and go. So as you see, we had a big bird underneath us. Traffic, traffic. It's over. Here. Climb, climb. Six, we had to avoid the traffic. This is the Iger right in front of us. You can see this airfield is kind of in the mountains, surrounded by terrain. Good morning at the uh, beautiful Switzerland this morning. I have Matthew Harkov. He is the test pilot. He will be flying me and showing me the capability of the super versatile jet behind the PC-24. Okay, follow me for a walk around and I'll show you all the things we look at on the outside of the airplane before we go fly. Biggest part of a walk around, of course, is to make sure that everything that should be attached is attached. So first thing we have here, the, uh, the Pedo probes. One is a primary and a standby. This is the primary and this is a standby. They look, you can see the discolored because they, they get heated very, very hot to make sure to prevent uh, icing. And they measure the dynamic pressure and the static pressure. Um, here, this is an angle of attack probe. We have two of these and one's on the other side. That measures the, uh, the angle of attack, the airflow um, angle coming over the, over the aircraft, over the wing, and basically tells us how far away we are from the stall. Avionics bay in the front here, but make sure that these latches are all uh, secure and flush. Landing gear on the nose. You can see the, uh, the landing gear of the PC-24 is, uh, is, uh, is quite beefy and has, uh, has uh, low pressure tires. That enables us to land on uh, unpaved, softer fields, uh, dirt, and uh, coming up certifying grass. So on the front we have the uh, a weather radar. Where about here? Panels are secure. Refueling panel is uh, here. Has some single point refueling in there. And this is also a heated leading edge. It's a detection system detects ice. Detects with the engine, uh, the, all the intakes, blades, as we can see. Engine inlets. Here on this side, we can check the trim points. You can see where the uh, elevator, the or stabilizer, is trimmed to. It's in the green range. A large cargo door, cargo area. Not a common thing to have in an airplane. I know, a, a side door. A, a business jet with a side door like this. Yes, yeah. so they have a replacement door. So, they... so we've also checked the cargo door before uh, and we see that it's fully latched. We have green indicators all the way around. All right, welcome aboard. Let's go. Let's Time go. go. Sit down. First thing we turn the uh, battery one on. You hear a bunch of systems powering up and coming online. Airplanes always have checklists to make sure we don't forget something, so I'm gonna go through. It's the right engine is gonna start to appear. Switch that to run and press the start button. Indicates start, we have something called N2, uh, which is indicating that's beginning to turn. A uh, quick trip around the cockpit. So we have our main primary flying display is called the PFD. That is here, that indicates uh, your airspeed on the left, altitude on the right. This will be our flight path uh, vector there. And attitude is by these bars here. We have a flight director, so I have it set for the takeoff uh, and that will show us where to put the nose. Um, it helps uh, show you what the autopilot's gonna do when you turn it on. You do, and this again is our heading down here. We have various overlays we can turn on and off. Terrain, uh, for example, you can see that the terrain that we're in is uh, is quite mountainous. Uh, weather radar, etc. Here's the engine parameters. So two engines, left and right. Most important parameters there. These are our radios. 
and uh, these are our navigation aids and then here we have primary uh, it's our navigation display here it shows what we have in for a flight plan it shows a uh, moving map and it shows a vertical display of where we're going what we've planned then um, repeated on the right a primary flying display and then down here at the bottom we have uh, we have basically an overview of all the different systems we can go through the watch out here I'm gonna pull these back so we just check full movement. Tower plus 124 requesting a taxi. 124, hello, taxi holding point 06, QNH 1006, temperature 11. Taxi to 06, 1006, uh, plus 124. Now this is a very unusual part of flying here, is we cross a road with an airplane. The road is going to go right across there. Also cows around. <laughs> Plus 124 is ready for departure, holding short 06. 124, expect departure in 2 to 3 minutes. So what we'll do is a, uh, we'll come up to take off thrust while we hold the brakes. Early, and then uh, we'll release some brakes. So we'll be on runway 06. 124, uh, understand the climb south of the axis and report passing 6,000 feet clear. Take off 124. So we have take off thrust set. And releasing in three, two, one. Oh. Speed's alive. Passing 60 knots. And V1 speed rotated coming up. Air handle comes up. The odd emperor comes on. There's our little count on here. Totally incredible. It was like 12 second rolling takeoff. Yep. Crazy. But you see, we have lots of mountains around here. <laughs> and uh, my main job is to keep us clear of traffic, clear of mountains. So we'll just come up to 10,000 feet. is we'll come overhead and we'll just uh, go through a little bit so the airplane will let you fly for a little bit and uh, just to get a feel for it. Oh and really? Can yeah, I? Of course. <laughs> get to see what uh, what the guys in the front are doing. Out of the equation here I'll set the auto throttles and I'm going to set them for 180 knots. So you'll see that these will begin to move on their own. Thrust levers. So you can see they move on their own. It's going to control. You can just put on your hands on with me but I'm still flying so my control still. Are you ready? Yeah. Your controls. Okay. That's your airplane. So, uh, let's just start a little bit of a climb so you can get a feel for that. So, pull the nose up uh, maybe four or five degrees. And now the wings are coming down this way, so let's uh, straighten it out. So, roll right a little bit. There you go. And you can see the thrust is now coming up to compensate for that. If you feel like you have a force you're holding, if you feel like you're holding a pull force, then trim up. I feel like you're holding a push force and trip down. Your controls again. Well, now let's uh, let's uh, do a gentle descent. So just push the nose gently forward. And when this is below the line there, we'll start descending. Let's come back down to 9,000 feet. Okay. So I'll put a little bug there. We'll do a uh, stall test. We're gonna put the gear down. A gear comes down here. There's the handle. There is three green landing gear. And now the flaps are going to begin bringing those down to 15. So that flap handle moves. The flaps indication is there. Those big flaps on the wing are now beginning to move. And you'll feel that. You'll feel that change in the uh, aircraft attitude. And you can feel also we're slowing down. Now I'm going to put down the flaps all the way to land, which is 33. And this makes a big change in the aircraft attitude. It generates uh, a lot more lift and slows our stall speed. What happens is as we get closer to the stall, the stick pusher system compares the angle of attack on both sides. That's an indicator we checked on the beginning of the flight. Compares the angle of attack on both sides, and if they reach a certain value and they agree, it's going to push the nose forward. 
So you'll feel that we'll be at about half a G, so we won't be quite floating, so we'll be coming forward in our seats. But, uh, oh, I never had a half a G, and yeah. I'm a bit anxious about yeah. seeing if I can take it. <laughs> we'll get a stall warning in just a minute. There's a stall warning, and the stick will shake. Right there. Stall. It's telling stall. you you're close stall. to the stall. And now stall. we'll continue. Stall. It does that to make it so stall. you can't miss it. And stall. there's the pusher. Whoa. Stall. And there we go. So it makes oh my God. Uh, the... Uh, the Big aircraft descent. is trying yeah. to protect you from going too slow, and so it does uh, does all that. Then the recovery, I put the flaps back to 15, the power comes up, the gear comes up, and we're climbing again. When a stall happened and when it nose down, and it felt like a roller coaster, you're just going down the yeah. sky. <laughs> That was yeah. a thrill. We will test something called a Dutch roll. So a Dutch roll is an emotion of an aircraft that uh, that feels like rolling and yawing at the same time, kind of like swimming. Uh, and it's, it uh, can be evident, especially at high altitude. So we have a yaw damper, which will uh, which will cancel it out. So to test that, we uh, we will use the rudders. I'll push the rudders. Then Three, the wing. two, one, now. So there's one. There's two, and release. You can see the aircraft is in a motion like this, but yeah. it will damp itself out. I mean, some of the things we do when we're uh, when we're testing, we test maneuver stability, which is uh, which is basically how much force it takes to generate a certain G. So you talked about G. We had half a G. One G is standing on the Earth. We're just going to do a uh, 60 degree angle of back turn, the two G turn. 2G turn, oh my god. Uh, well, our trainer aircraft go up to 8G. So this is, uh, we're, we're nowhere, uh, nowhere near that. So this is 1.4 Gs right there. Whoa. And Whoa. Bank angle. There's two, it gives bank us a bank angle. angle call out to tell us, hey, you're at a higher bank angle than normal. And uh, this is 2Gs right there. That's my first 2G. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Beautiful execution. What we can do here is we can uh, do what's called a level acceleration. Just from just above the stall speed, then we will accelerate. That's where we can map out when we do climb performance. You can map out the uh, best speeds for accelerations. The acceleration in 3, 2, 1. No. Well, here comes the acceleration. Oh yeah, There's look at the speed. Oh. And as we do that, I'm trimming the airplane. See, we've gone and now through 200. We don't exceed the VMO, the normal operating speed. So we're just right at the, just about at the red line of the aircraft, which is 290. In testing, we've gone way past that. Let's do a touch and go. Let's do a touch and go. Great, right. let's do it. So we're gonna turn here and slow down and enter the traffic pattern. We can feel some turbulence here as we descend through the level of the mountain top soon. Okay. We're going to land on 06. Zero six. We're going to go around the mountain. The traffic pattern in this airfield is uh, quite interesting. It's 4,000 feet, but on the other side of the mountain here. And we'll okay. come around and we'll fly through a gap and then uh, do a touch oh. go there. And this is the uh, Hamach Font lift. You see the elevator on the outside. It's, I guess one of the longest. I'll give you some left wing down and we can see the... Uh, there's the elevator. Wow. This is also the famous one, the, the Bergenstock or something. Yep, this is the Bergenstock Resort. Look here, we have three down, flaps are at 33. One, two, four, stop, stop, two, down, 700. Down, two, four, wind, zero, eight, zero degrees, five knots, runway zero, six, clear for touch and go. One, two, four, clear, touch and go. One, two, four is coming to beam, how much fun, 4,000? One, two, four, number one, runway zero, six, after touch and go, it will be for a left turn out, cross route, Richter, 6,000 or above. Touch and touch, you got left turn out, grid sector 6000, or above, 124. You can see the airfield right there. Just turning on the final. Approaching, zero, six. One hundred. Bird underneath 30. us. One, two, four, going around for bird. Four, 
There was a bird right underneath us there. Oh. One, two, four, eight, firm for another circuit. So as you see, we had a big bird underneath us. Uh, I was so focused on filming. But, yeah, uh, you'll see it in the film. Hopefully you see it on the film, yeah. yeah. A really I big bird. Know, I didn't know which direction he was moving. Uh, cool. There, it's a kite. Uh, oh. Do it again. Hey. We're going to touch down. I'm going to put the uh, throttles forward. And then I'll change the flaps. And we'll take off again. One hundred. Right side. Clear. Starting descent to what's the top. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Good spoilers. Come on. And rotate. Ah, the right gear comes up. The yeah, other comes up. Following the heading, or the track right now, climb up to 6,000 feet. So the route we're flying right now is going to go over uh, Zarnersee, Meiringen, Interlaken, and then uh, around the valley to Gstaad. Traffic, traffic. Now he's going to be on our left side. Uh, traffic, traffic. Nice. And you go for a road to get over left into the Can you see traffic? Traffic, traffic. It's over. Climb, climb. Level off, level off. Okay, so nice. Alright, level off. Yeah, in sight. Yeah, I see it now. It's a little Clear of conflict. See, the system gives you all that information. I saw him, a little turbulent here. We'll slow down just a... One, two, four is coming burning now, 6,400. Back to six, we had to avoid the traffic there. For Roger, climb to 7,000 feet, continue north in the valley, report into Lockham. So we're going to be coming over this ridge into Grindelwald. This is the Eiger right in front of us. This one? Yeah, the big flat face right there. You can see part of the ski area there. I know, we're about all of them. And the clouds are right. All the people who took the train up there are in the cloud now. So what we'll do is I will, uh, I'll come around and then it'll be on your side. Okay. Autos 1 to 4 is on an air room. We have runway 26 in use. Please land at your own discretion. I'm going to put the flaps down to 15. And we'll go in just for a straight in approach. And there's the airfield uh, at the end of that valley. Yeah. It's hiding behind this little mountain. 124 is at 5 minutes for a straight in 26. And uh, Autos 124 for your information. We have 6 knots coming from the west. Here, one, two, three, down, lock flaps, 33. Pressurization is coming down, the outnumber's off already. You can see this airfield is kind of in the mountains, surrounded by terrain. Not, uh, not a very big airfield. One, two, four is coming, final, two, six, uh, landing, two, six. This is gonna be a, uh, we're gonna stop quickly, so just yep. make sure you're holding on to your whatever's in your hand. Okay. We'll do a quick stop. Butter. Think rate. And that'll, that's gonna tell us Think uh, rate. about that. Because this is a steep approach here. Think rate. Think rate. Pull up. Okay, the terrain is in. Pull up. Pull up. That's the system that's because of our steep approach angle here. Oh, 
Approaching minimums. Minimums. One hundred. Right side. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. He didn't use all the runway. It's only 1,000 meter runway here. So yeah, the system is uh, it's giving you a lot of warnings because that, but that's what this uh, this approach calls for, unfortunately. Welcome to Cloud Airport here at Zon. We are currently at three two eight four feet above sea level. 